Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. I want to do a video on some pictures that a hobbyist in New York sent me. Uh, he's got this uh, Red Sea 75 gallon aquarium, which is uh, set up with a sump using some BCB baskets in the sump. And he's using fluorite red only for his plenum. And it's a slow moving plenum and as you look at the pictures you can actually see the bubbles popping at the top uh, he has a normal under gravel filter plate with this aquarium and it's been set up for almost a year now and he bought some uh, Jack uh, widely uh, discus wild ones had them sent to him there in New York and uh, I guess some people have complained about uh, Jack Wiley discus but these are wild discus that he got from him he's had no problems with them none of them have died or anything the only problem he has if you want to even call it a problem they keep spawning every six to seven days and of course then when the they hatch uh, the parents seem to eat them because he has other discus in the tank that are spooking the two mating pair but they made it you know they got together and made it uh, immediately so he was telling me about that that uh, yeah they're spawning continuously he myosin shrimp is what he feeds them frozen myosin sh shrimp is what he's feeding the fish he says it's no big deal they just gobble it down um, but there was one thing I said well now since you've been using the anoxic filtration system in your fish tanks and you're using the plenum or slow moving plenum in your fish tanks. He has three of them. Um, what do you think about the whole thing? You know, I mean, give me your honest opinion. What do you think? Because he's had fish before and discus before. He said, well, I'll be honest with you. He says, it's boring. He says, because I'm not doing anything. He says, I haven't cleaned the substrate in the big 75 gallon tank. In almost a year uh, the fish are spawning continuously he said uh, very uh, he changes 15 gallons of water at least once a week uh, on the Red Sea Aquarium he says other than that it's boring because well the first of all he doesn't use uh, um, CO2 he has expensive Kessel lights okay and they made a program for him Kessel did to help him out because they knew he wasn't using CO2 and he had plants so they made a special program for him the program the Kessel lights that he's using and uh, he said the only time I get algae is only on the very old leaves of the plants and you get a little bit of algae on you know that uh, that older leaf I said yeah I'm noticing the same thing just older leaves get a little bit of algae on them he said uh, other than that he says the plants are growing profusely as you can see by the pictures he actually had to cut a lot of the plants trim them up he's going to send me a box full of plants he said have not fertilized he notices runners with his crypt going all over the tank now just as I explained in my past videos he he said without using any fertilizer without using any seal 2 the plants are growing great in fact he has to cut them down as you can see by the pictures he said basically you know it, it's just boring because it, in his other tanks there was a lot of work that had to be involved and these tanks uh, he said very little work and I you know I concurred with him I said yeah in my 90 gallon I don't do nothing you know I do a, a maybe a 10 gallon water change once a week big deal uh, I can't clean the substrate because the plants are starting to grow all over the substrate there's not a lot of room and me to get in there I said basically the lights come on I have the dosing system uh, for the refilling of the aquarium I used that I said other than that I don't do nothing I 
go away on vacation, I can come back, everything's just fine. He said the same thing. <clears throat> he had a busy month, he, you know, he couldn't deal with the tank that much. He had a very busy month. He said, no problems at all. Not like it was years ago when he had his discus years ago. He said, and I'm just quoting him, he said, the discus are so easy to take care of now. He says, they're like any other fish. He says, using your system. I said, I noticed that with my older videos when I had the discus. They became so easy to take care of. They were no harder to take care of than an ordinary angelfish. And of course, this was not the case 30, 40 years ago when you had discus. Uh, I thought I would bring this up. I have a short video on it because you... If you're thinking about using a system like this, if you do it correctly, like so many people that I know have contacted me are doing it correctly, you're gonna have very little problems with your aquarium, very little problems with everything, if it's done correctly. Just like my aquarium, I show you, I have very bright lights. This guy has two Kessel lights on. Yes, it's a, once again, a very expensive, light system for this aquarium, but for not using CO2 and its plants are growing profusely and it doesn't have all these algae problems, he's got wild discus spawning continuously about every six to seven days. He said, what more can you want? And he says, uh, once he can get rid of the other discus that are in the tank with him, uh, Gabe, that Jack Wiley's told them, then they'll probably take care of their young instead of eating them because they're scared right now that uh, with the other discus in the tank. And Gabe says, just dedicate the tank to those discus that are spawning. And he says, you'll probably come up with spawning the discus very easily. So I wanted to make this video just to let you know if you're thinking about it, still procrastinating. Here's a guy from New York very happy with the entire anoxic filtration system with the slow moving plenum. He said every tank he has, he has three of them, he says they're doing great, very little algae. Algae only grows on the oldest of leaves after they've been there. You know, you'll get a little bit of algae on them. Same way with me, but nothing that becomes problematic. You know, it's not a problem child or, or, or anything that you have to, you know, even snip off the leaves and because they look so bad or they're getting all kinds of string algae or beard algae or anything like that and like my tank his tank is starting to grow profusely all the plants and i just want to show you this because my next video is going to be uh someone asked me to do one on ultraviolet lights so i'm going to do it on ultraviolet lights that will be coming up next but on this video I thought I would just show you if you are one of those who are still looking and you're wondering, oh, does it really work? Well, here's some very difficult fish. And this guy says, it's getting boring. And I hate to say it, yes, that's the problem. Your fish don't die. Your fish don't get sick. They remain very healthy. They spawn on you. I have spawned over about 254 different species of fish myself. Here he is, his discus are spawning like crazy. And, and that's good, that's, that's what the whole hobby is about. And the hobby, in a way, should become boring. You shouldn't have to be fighting with your aquarium. It should become boring. You know, fish don't die, you're gonna have to sell them, you're gonna have to get rid of them, uh, you're gonna have to give them away. That's how it was with me when I used the anoxy filtration system. I had the oldest living koi, and they're still alive today in the state of Illinois. They're like some of my koi now are going on 35 plus years. That's a long time. But they all live in ponds that use the anoxic filtration system. Okay, versus the more modern filtration systems. 
those were the koi. They live and they just keep living and they keep living. And be, I'm going to be honest with you. In the 30 years I had my pond before, you know, I sold my home and everything, I didn't have any sick koi. Didn't have any sick koi. Never had to worry about chemicals. Never had to worry about uh, uh, re inoculating the system come springtime. All those worries were gone. The fish just kept living and I had no worries. Did my water changes come spring, come fall, I, I would clean out the anoxic filter, fill it back up, come spring, I would do another water change and that's it. That's all I would do, just spring and fall. So I just want to make sure that you see because other hobbyists are having great success with using this system, I know some have problems. I don't know what they did wrong, but here's a guy who's got three tanks set up and he said, they're doing absolutely great. The plants are growing like crazy. And he has some high powered lights on these aquariums without all kinds of algae problems. So I hope you enjoyed the video. This is one example of many that are out there of people having extreme success using an anoxy filter or using a slow moving plenum other than just taking your substrate and throw it in at the bottom of the aquarium. And as I've explained to you in my other videos, if you haven't seen them, if you're new to this channel, watch some of my other videos and it will explain why his plants are growing so good because slow moving plenum brings nutrients down to the root system of your aquarium plants. It guarantees that will happen. Oh, another thing is, uh, as you see at the beginning of this video, uh, I now have a, it's called the Ichthyology Store. You can get yourself, if you want, you can buy yourself a teacher uh, t-shirt uh, that uh, uh, Noxic Filtration System. Somebody asked me if they can get t-shirts and so you can get uh click on the link below and it'll take you right to the store where you can order your own t-shirt but anyway uh until my next video on ultraviolet lights uh be safe and uh happy aquarium keeping and thank you for watching once again